Hello, everybody. I uh, hope you're all doing well. Thank you for joining me today to talk about encouraging repeat purchase behavior with your customers. Let's jump right in. My name is Samantha Narahari Sethi. Uh, I'm a product manager at House. For those of you that are unfamiliar with House, uh, we are a home design uh, inspiration platform. We also have a e-commerce uh, slash marketplace at House that sell home goods and furniture, uh, and that is the team that I'm part of. Uh, here at our marketplace, I specifically focus on repeat purchase behavior and the overall customer lifetime value. Uh, if you'd like to connect with me later or just ask me any questions, uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. Just uh, look for me with my full name. A little bit of background about me. Um, I started off my career as an iOS developer for a banking client uh, with Tata Consultancy Services. Uh, here I was working on building iPhone and iPad applications for this banking client. Um, I left that role to pursue uh, my master's, get an MBA. Uh, I went to business school at the University of Arizona uh, with the hopes of actually moving into tech consulting. Uh, while in school and through my internship, I, I got introduced to the field of product management and decided to pursue that field instead. Um, so out of school, I landed a product manager position at Overstock um, on their mobile apps team, thanks to my, I guess, like my iOS dev background. Uh, so at Overstock, I was focused on customer acquisition and conversion. So essentially getting people to download the app and make a purchase on the app. Um, at Overstock, I... Um, or excuse me, after Overstock, I moved on to Carfax to launch a new product uh, for them from scratch. Uh, so this was like a web-based product. It was a web-based marketplace. And my focus was um, organic traffic growth and user engagement on the platform itself. So here's the agenda for today. We'll start off with quickly looking at the definition of repeat purchase and why you should care about instilling a repeat behavior with your customers. We'll also talk about what counts as repeat. Is it just conversion? Um, and finally, we'll look at some tactics or levers that uh, encourage repeat um, along with some examples that some other companies are doing um, with these tactics. So um, firstly, what is repeat purchase? You know, as the name suggests, repeat purchase is buying uh, from you or buying your product over and over again. This can be prompted or unprompted. Uh, we'll go over what that means shortly. Uh, but it is building that behavior until it comes naturally to your customer that you are no longer investing in them anymore. Typically, this behavior is measured um, in a metric called repeat purchase rate. And it looks at um, how, how customers or how many customers place more than one order in a given period of time, whether that's like 30 days, 90 days, or even like 12 months. Repeat rates can vary, uh, you know, from like industry to industry and business to business. So um, you need to measure accordingly when you're looking at the repeat rate at your company. Um, you know, for example, average repeat rate in retail e-commerce tends to be between 20 and 30 percent. But um, like I said, it can vary from uh, company to company. Now that we've kind of set the stage on what repeat means, uh, we need to quickly talk about you know, why this is a big deal. A direct result um, of repeat behavior is obviously like more sales and or um, higher GMV or gross merchandise value, but it also lowers your customer acquisition costs because you are now spending less and less to make that sale. These repeat customers, they tend to be great advocates for your brand because they like your product, they keep coming back, and now they become great sources of word of mouth, like organic marketing for you. Um, and finally, this behavior builds loyalty uh, with and for your customers, which is you know just great to have. Now, so so far in our conversation, when we talk about repeat, we've only ta been talking about like sales or conversion, but a sale is not always the right approach because your customer, you know, they, they may just not be ready yet. They might be like higher up in their purchase journey or funnel. Uh, this is why, you know, repeat should not just be about conversion. You need to think about, uh, you know, in two ways, conversion and engagement. So conversion, yes, it directly moves the needle on the repeat purchase rate. But when the time is not right, you need to think long term. You need to find ways to engage your user so that when they're finally ready, you're on top of mind for them. They come to you to make that purchase. 
continuous and meaningful engagement, uh, you know, continuous and meaningful engagement is a great way uh, to have stickiness for your product. So, so far we've talked about, you know, what repeat purchase means, why it's important. Uh, now let's look at some levers and tactics to improve repeat purchase rate. So the levers are uh, at a very high level uh, product, your post purchase experience and marketing. So within each of these levers, um, there are some tactics that various companies use and we'll go over each of them. Um, I also want to go back to the conversation about uh, repeat behavior being both conversion and engagement and not just conversion. You'll notice that each of these tactics uh, falls into either one of them or both, depending on like who you are and how you're using each of these tactics. Um, and as we talk through each of these, I encourage you to think about what you're currently doing at your company or what else you could be doing related to each of these. So um, let's talk about product first. First and foremost is the product itself. So we're talking about you know, your digital product, whatever it is, uh, you know, an app or a website. The user experience on your product must be frictionless. A user should be able to go from like start to finish seamlessly. I, you know, I'd encourage you to test a customer's happy path on your website from time to time and reevaluate it. See if there's anything that needs to be changed. You need to ensure that the overall product, you know, it's easy to use. And if you can make it fun, uh, you know, it makes the customer want to come back. Like, you know, like Duolingo does if any of you have used it. Next is uh, signups. So signups or account creation is a valuable weapon to have as a product owner. Uh, once you have a user's email address or phone number, you can target them and communicate with your users throughout their purchase journey and even afterwards to bring them back. Um, a common way to get a user's email or phone number is using uh, pop-ups or models like across the site. Um, and there's usually like an incentive or coupon attached. Um, you'll see this when you, you know, when you visit a website for the first time or you know, even after you've made a purchase, you'll see them trying to get you to create an account. So speaking of uh, coupons or incentives, you can simply give your customers an incentive for the next purchase. And this is what we talked about earlier in the repeat purchase definition uh, about prompted or unprompted sales. This is a sometimes the first step in getting the user to like, uh, you know, what they're buying from you and to keep coming back. Hopefully for subsequent purchases, they come back on their own uh, and you're not like having to invest more coupons in this user. Uh, but you need to remember to be strategic about your coupons. Um, you know, like give them an expiration date, uh, give them like a coupon max price or like a minimum spend. Uh, you need to find the right coupon uh, for you, for your bottom line and for your budget. So, you know, in this example, like you can see, um, Portland Pie is giving away coupons for like $5 max um, after spending a minimum of $25 because that's what makes sense for them. Um, so you need to evaluate what makes sense for you. The fourth tactic is app downloads. Uh, in general, app users tend to have higher engagement and conversion rates. Um, you know, you're always on their phone in front of their eyes. And, you know, if they're giving you real estate on your phone, it means they like you, you know, at least a little bit. Um, and apps are able to communicate uh, with the user almost immediately uh, through like push notifications. Uh, which is like a gate uh, engagement play. A very common way to like get more app downloads is via smart banners on mobile web. You must have seen these banners on a lot of like mobile websites. Uh, so it's just like a little banner at the top. Um, these are great because when a user clicks on them, it takes them to the app store and then jumps them to the app. So you, the user is kind of left kind of seamlessly using uh, your product on the app from mobile web. Next up is personalization. Uh, personalization is important because you and I are not the same. Your website should not be looking the same for both you and me. You should be personalizing the site to your customer based on their activity on your site. So basically what they've been doing on your site, plus what many other customers like this very customer have been doing on your site. This is called collaborative furnishing and it's what sites like Amazon and a lot of other like sites use. You know, have you ever noticed that 
you know, when you're browsing for a product, you see suggestions of other items that may be similar to the one that you're looking at. Or sometimes you get recommended a very random product and you, you end up buying it. So we are using personalization as a way to get users to explore more products until they find the one that they like and want to buy. In a repeat context, sometimes when a user has already made a purchase, we can recommend them other products. Um, this can be either via email or when they come back to your site. These recommendations can either be like complementary in nature. So for example, you recommend a rug to somebody that has just bought a couch. Or these recommendations can be completely like exploratory in nature. So maybe you're recommending, um, you know, like a bathroom vanity to somebody who's just bought a couch because you think this user might, you know, just ha might have moved into a new house. So recommendations like these, um, they encourage users to click around and buy more items and kind of keep coming back to your site. The next tactic is a good rewards program. Uh, this is a form of gamification, and it's a great way to keep the user coming back. Uh, you know, whether you're giving them like points for uh, making a purchase that they can redeem later, or giving them points for writing reviews, or giving them like free shipping, free returns, whatever it is. Um, you know, if it's something that you know benefits them and it's something that will excite them or something that they will care about. Um, it, it is a great way to keep users coming back. Um, you need to find out like what your users are excited about um, and put them as perks for your rewards program. So you you know you're making that behavior, bringing them back um, to make more and more purchases. And finally, community building. This is a um, you know by the people for the people play. Um, you are more likely you know to believe your friends and your family or even your community rather than, you know, like a company that's trying to sell you their product. This is kind of the same way. So having ratings and reviews or customer Q&A, it engages users on your platform and it provides social proof about your product to other new users. Um, I mean, think about how many times you've brought a product after reading reviews on Amazon because now you trust the product even more. Um, this is, you know, a way to encourage users to give back um, to the community also, because if, you know, you as a user, if you've made a purchase based on other reviews, a lot of the times you're in, enticed to come back and give reviews that may be helpful for others. So you're keeping users engaged on your platform. So moving on to the next level, uh, which is a post-purchase experience. The tactics here are not necessarily like related to your like website or app or just your product itself, but it plays a crucial role in the overall experience the user has with your company. You want them to, you know, like feel good and confident about coming back to you to make a second or more purchase with you. The first tactic here is uh, logistics. A lot of retail companies today, they've trained our customers to, you know, expect really quick, super fast delivery. Um, if you're a company that can do this, play this to your advantage but if it's not possible for you um, you know like sometimes really fast shipping can be really expensive or sometimes it just might be not possible because you ship like large items um, in this case your best bet is to be as accurate and honest as you can with your customers so they know what to expect when they're making that purchase um, and finally you want to make the whole process easy for them for example, if you need to schedule a delivery, don't make them do like a million things before they can actually do that. Like make it super quick, make it one platform so they're not jumping across websites um, and, you know, just make it overall pretty easy. The next one is post-purchase transactional communication, uh, meaning emails or push notifications or maybe even SMS related to a customer's order. You know, as a, as a user, you always want to be in the know about your order, you know, about your order, you know, get to know when your order is confirmed, if it's shipped, if it's delivered, um, you know, any tracking information, if it's going to be late, etc. cetera. Um, this is a nice way to alleviate any anxiety for the user and provide a good experience for them. Also, you know, have you noticed sometimes that these emails have like product recommendations? So this is a nice way to cross sell your customers on like other products and get them to make a you know, purchase like after they've already made a purchase. Uh, so the third one is, you know, returns and just like the return process. Um, you know, you want to be clear and upfront about what your return policy is. So your user is not like left surprised. 
um, keep the process um, easy and stress-free as you can and give the user like options on where they want to return things, if they want to do things digitally or like manually, uh, just things like that you need to, again, like if you've been, like the theme is on our post purchase, you need to keep it simple. And lastly, uh, having a good customer service team can make a lot of difference. Your customer service agent should know your product and be able to answer questions and help the user navigate a problem with ease. Anytime you launch a new feature or product, customer training should be one of your to-do items as part of your like product launch strategy. Um, you should also look at providing like self-service options because not everybody like wants to call in or wait uh, wait on the phone. Like you know, especially for me. Um, and I'm sure like many of you, you'd rather just do it, you know, on your phone rather than like call in and get it done. Great. Um, so our last lever is marketing. Um, I do want to point out that there are many more things that you can do under marketing here, uh, but I'm only outlining things that you can do pertaining to like repeat conversion or engagement. But obviously marketing is like a, a huge, uh, a huge bubble. So the first is paid retargeting or remarketing. Um, a shopper rarely, uh, you know, they make a purchase in their first session on your website or anybody's website. It usually like takes a couple of rounds, a couple of sessions before a user, you know, they, they come to your site, they see a product and they feel like, you know, they're ready to make a purchase. So, um, so sometimes in the process, they might not come back. Um, so what you want to do is you want to reel them back in because these are customers that have shown high shopping intent on your site. You know, they've viewed a product or two, they spent a lot of time on your site. So retargeting ads are a great way to do that. Um, I'm sure many of you have seen this um, and they're a great way to remind the customer of a product that they were browsing. Uh, how many times has this happened to you? You were looking at a product, you know, maybe some boots. Um, you go away and see an ad for the same boost on like a blog or on Facebook. You get maximum impact if you pick a certain set of audience, like users who have been browsing a certain number of products or users who spent like X amount of time on your site um, or users who have added a card or wish list but didn't make a purchase. So keep your audience, target them, um, and then you can show these ads to kind of bring them back. Next and last is cross-channel communication. Um, this just means that you're using like multiple channels uh, or modes of communication to target and speak to your customers and to engage them in various ways. Um, so the next couple of slides is all going to be like a bunch of different, uh, I guess, channels that you can communicate. Um, so the first one, promotional emails are a good way to communicate with your customer from time to time, you know, while they're making a purchase or after. Uh, apart from like transactional emails, this is a way to tell them, you know, a bit more, maybe, you know, like be it about like a seasonal sale or offers or like, you know, bestsellers on your site. I mean, think about it. How many Memorial Day emails did you get and how many did you actually click through and maybe even made a purchase? Um, this is a great way, again, to like stay top of mind for your customer. Another category of emails is user triggered emails, meaning a user gets these as a result of taking an action or a certain set of actions on your site. So some examples are cart abandonment. Um, so your user added uh, a product to their cart, but left before placing an order. Or uh, another example is back in stock. So user gave you their email to alert them when an item is back in stock or you know drops in price. These encourage the user to, you know, like these emails, they encourage the user to take an action directly. And typically these users tend to be like high converters because you know they're shown again, like high shopping intent, with the actions they've taken on your site. So it's important for you to have such re-engaging emails and also don't forget to like optimize them for their content and also like subject lines. One thing that um, you know I'd like to add about emails, uh, whether they are like promotional or user-triggered emails is that timing is more important than the email content itself. Meaning when you send the email is highly important and it can actually affect your like email open rate and click through rates. You don't want to be sending emails to someone to shop on your website, you know, as they're just waking up in the morning or they're driving to work. Uh, you know, you don't want to be left on red. So many, uh, you know, you'll find many like email marketing platforms today. They have the ability to intelligently send emails to the users. 
uh, basically when the user is more likely to open an email from you. Uh, you know, if you don't already, I would highly recommend investing in such a tool just, you know, to get, um, you know, like I said, better email open rates and click-through rates. Um, it will eventually, like, add up. Um, another mode of communication with the customers is, uh, you know, like on your app uh, via push notifications. Uh, like we saw in the app download tactic, um, these users tend to be like highly engaged users. So push notifications is a powerful communication tool and can get a user to take an action as soon as they see it. But, uh, you know, like obviously push notifications can be tricky because they tend to have low subscription rates. Um, and they're also like one time. So when you click on a notification, it goes away and the user can find it again. So, um, you know, like I would say these are the two cons, but, you know, if you have high sub subscribers, like that is great. A common way that um, a lot of companies improve their push notification subscription rate is to show users some kind of value prop to subscribing. So usually they'll say, you know, like there's like a pop up when you download the app, they'll say, you know, don't miss any sale or get instant order updates uh, when you subscribe to push, etc. So uh, make sure you have some kind of an onboarding uh, to help people subscribe to push notifications. And our last uh, cross channel communication mode is SMS. This is a relatively new channel that is being explored. Um, and very much like push notification, this is a very like instant uh, mode of communication with your users. Um, you know, you can provide like transactional messages, promotional messages on here. Uh, you know, in this example, Sweet Green, which is like a salad, uh, you know, restaurant takeaway store, um, they were able to increase their uh, conversion by 10%, uh, or excuse me, to 10% by sending coupons via SMS. So one thing to keep in mind, though, is that there are a lot of like legal constraints about how you collect and use a user's phone number. So I just be wary of that. But this is definitely uh, one of the newer channels that you should be exploring. Um, and, you know, it's it's been known to show like high conversion and repeat rates. So um, to reiterate, um, the levers to improve a repeat purchase rate are product, uh, post-purchase experience, and marketing. Uh, remember that each of these tactics, you know, like falls into one of conversion or engagement of both, depending on how you use them and what your business is. Um, and, you know, lastly, a sale takes time. So invest in your customer, engage them until they're ready and until you make, can, you know, you can make that sale. Um, yeah, thank you all so much for your time today. Um, I'd encourage each and every one of you to think about, you know, what levers and tactics make sense in your industry and your company. Think about what behaviors a customer take, be both, you know, long-term and short-term behaviors before making a purchase. And, and you will understand, like, what your levers are, uh, you know, for your team or your company. Um, and, yeah, finally, you know, shoot me a message on LinkedIn, you know, if you have any questions, if you'd just like to chat. Um, yeah, thank you, everybody.